So hello, teacher and classmates. As you can see, I'm going to talk about communicative competence by Del Himes of chapter nine, principles of language learning and teaching. So who is Del Himes? He was born on June 7th, in 19, 1927 in Portland. He earned a bachelor's degree in literature and anthropology from Reed College in 1950. He taught at Harvard, University of California, Berkeley, and the University of Pennsylvania. So what is communicative competence? It was coined by Dale Himes in 1967 and 1972, a sociolinguistic who was convinced by Chomsky. Chomsky's. Himes referred to communicative competence as the aspect of our competence that enables us to convey and interpret messages and to negotiate meanings interpersonally within specific context. So this means that our communicative competence is important because it let us um, know how the message is interpreted and understood. And communicative competence is distinguished between linguistic and communicative competence to highlight the difference between knowledge language forms and knowledge that enables a person to communicate functionally and interactively. So these are the subcategories of the linguistic system. Linguistic or grammatical. Firstly, it was called grammatical, but I'll explain later. So it's a knowledge of the language code that is its grammar and vocabulary, and also of the conventions of its written representation script and orthography. Moreover, it covers rules such as morphology, syntax, sen sentence, grammar, semantics, and phonology. This course is the knowledge of how to produce and comprehend oral or written texts in the modes of speaking, writing, and listening and reading, respectively. It's knowing how to combine language structures into a cohesive and coherent oral or written texts of different types. Sociolinguistic is the knowledge of sociocultural rules of use, that is, knowing how to use and respond to language appropriately. The appropriateness depends on the setting of the communication, the topic, and the relationships among the people communicating. Strategic is the ability to recognize and repair communication breakdowns before, during, or after they occur. For instance, the speaker may not know a certain word. Thus, will plan to either paraphrase, like things that that person have heard before, like in series, movies, um, videos, songs, uh, newspaper, books, notes, and stuff like that, or ask what that word is in the target language. So there were some changes in communicative competence. Leo Backman simply calls it language competence, talking about grammatical and discourse competence under one node, which appropriately calls organizational competence. All those rules and systems that dictate whether they can be sentence level, rules grammar, or rules that makes us how to structurize or string the sentences together, discourse. Canal and Swain sociolinguistic competence, um, it's now broken down into two pragmatic categories, functional aspects of language, which are elocu elocutionary competence and sociolinguistic aspects. Elocutionary competence, it's about sending and receiving intended meanings and sociolinguistic aspects it's about dealing with such considerations such as politeness, formality, metaphor, register, and culturally 
related aspects of language. So this is which are the language functions. As it says in the image and chart is the language competence. It changed from communicative competence to language competence by Lil Bachmans. So here's the organizational competence and the pragmatic competence. Here is textual competence, cohesion, rhetorical organization, grammatical competence, vocabulary, morphology, syntax, phonology, graphology, uh, sentence, grammar, and so on. This is grammatic competence, elocutionary competence, ideational functions, manipulative functions, heuristic functions, imaginative functions. These are some of the functions that I'm going to be talking about. And social linguistic competence, sensitivity to dialect of variety, sensitivity to register, sensitivity to naturalness, and cultural references and features of speech. So, Elocutionary competence consists of the ability to manipulate the functions of language. So functions are essentially because of the purpose that we accomplish with language, such as stating, requesting, responding, reading, parting, etc. Functions cannot be accomplished, of course, without the forms of language, like morphemes, words, grammar rules, discourse, discourse rules, and other organizational competencies, which forms all of this in the chart. While forms are the outward manifestation of language, functions are the realizations of those forms. So these are the seven types of language functions. First of all, it's the instrumental. Instrumental function serves to manipulate environmental to cause and certain events to happen. Sentences like, this court finds you guilty, on your mark set go, don't, ch don't touch the stove, have an instrument instrumental function. They are communicative acts that have a specific perlocutionary force. They bring about a particular condition. So it can be called like, or sort of like a command, like, uh, give me that, bottle of water it's something specific or send me the email send me the audio and second is their regulatory the regulatory function of language is the control of events such control is sometimes difficult to distinguish from the from the instrumental function regulatory functions of language are not so much the unleashing of certain power as a maintenance of control and the third is the representational. The representational function is the use of language to make statements, convey facts and knowledge, explain or report. That is to represent the reality as one sees it. For example, the, hot, the sun is hot. The president gave a speech last night or even the world is flat. All serve representational functions, although the last representation may be highly disputed. Uh, fourth one is interactional. The interactional function of language serves to ensure social maintenance. Um, referring to the communicative and contact between and among human beings that simply allows them to establish social contact and to keep channels of communication open. That is part of the interactional function of language. Successful interactional communication requires knowledge of slang, jargon, jokes, folklore, cultural mores, politeness and formality expectations, and other keys to social exchange. And the fifth, fifth one is the personal function. It allows a speaker to express feelings, emotions, uh, personality, God level, and person's individuality is usually characterized by his or her use of the personal function of communication. The personal nat nature of language, cognition, affect, and culture all interact at the same time. 
and the sixth one, sixth one is the heuristic function. It involves language used to acquire knowledge, to learn about the environment. Heuristic functions are often conveyed in the form of questions that will lead to answers. It can be sort of um, rhetorical questions, like obvious, uh, like ask, like asking something that is obvious that can be answered alone. And children typically make good use of the heuristic function functions in their insistent, such as why questions about the world around them. Inquiry is a heuristic method of eliciting representations of reality from others. Last and not, but not least, the imaginative function serves to create imag imaginary systems or ideas. Ta for example, telling fairy, fairy tales, joking, or writing a novel are all uses of the imaginative function. Poetry, tongue twisters, puns, and other instances of the pleasurable uses of language also falls into the imaginative function. So I'm going to talk about the pragmatics. The pragmatics, it conveys and interprets meaning and pragmatics constraints on language comprehension and production as the effect of context on strings of linguistic events. So in this example, there's a little daughter called Stephanie and she was um, called by some stranger at the phone. So she says, hello, hi Steph, is your mom, is your mom here? Just a minute, mom, phone. I'm in the tub, she can talk now. I'm gonna leave a message. I'll call back later, bye. So a lot of people, like when they're learning a new language, they, they might be a difference of cultural um, ways of talking, of speaking. So Stephanie just said, just a minute, mom phone mom phone that's it so that means that there's like a little bit of context and her mom knows what she's talking about saying that someone at the phone needs her like she like the person from from the phone wants to talk to her mom and second language acquisition becomes an exceedingly difficult task when the social pragmatic or pragmatic constraints are brought to bear. In both cases, the non-native English teachers is understood that illoc illocutionary force of the utterance within the context. Learning the organizational rules of a second language are almost simple when compared to the complexity of catching on to a seemingly never-ending list of pragmatic constraints. For example, talking about cultural um, shocks, we can refer to a Japanese uh, person who is trying to learn English. So for him, he will say, I'm sorry for almost everything he has done wrong or even like a small um, uh, like pushed or touched in the streets, for example, and they will say, I'm sorry, or when they feel embarrassed or something like that. And in their native language, they will say, Sumimamasen, referring to almost everything, such as um, showing respect to elder people. Thank you.